Hello and welcome back to my Java 8 tutorial series. This is the, the stuff from last episode and if you haven't noticed, instead of using Sublime and Terminal in order to compile everything, I decided to switch over to Eclipse because that is going to make everything a lot easier. So now we're starting on episode 3. Last time we went over Lambda expressions. This time we'll be going over um, uh, the uh, another new feature added in Java 1.8, which were streams, which um, adds new ways to um, interact and um, sort and do a whole bunch of cool stuff to collections. Which you know, part of the collections API would be array lists and stuff like that. And I int uh, introduced that stuff in my normal tutorial series in, um, I think, the generics episodes and better than arrays. But um, without further ado, we can actually uh, get started on this. Now, before we actually start dealing with it, we should uh, actually make something we can sort. So let's make public static class person. Because a person might have several different things that could ha that they could have so they could have a uh, first name last name they could have an age they could have uh, gender which in order to do that we'll have an enum We'll have male and female, if I can spell it right. So we'll say in order for a person, you can either have, we can have the string uh, name. So I spelled string wrong, look at that. <laughs> Surname, age gender, gender, and let's add public gender, gender. So we'll say this dot first name equals name, this dot surname, this dot last name, sorry, equals surname, this dot age equals age, and finally this dot gender equals g. And just because I don't feel like doing doing something like this, I'm going to add a convenience method where it just has one argument for name. We'll say this um, name dot split around a space. That way, it'd be easy to make uh, more of these. And then uh, we're just going to add uh, a few convenience methods, which will be a public integer compare name. So we'll have person p1 and person p2. And what this will be will just be you're going to return p1 dot first name dot compare. Since string already has a compare method that returns a number. Um, depending on, you know, the comparison between the two. And we'll just add a few more. So we can actually, when we actually start sorting these things with the new stream API, we actually have stuff to sort. So realistically, you know, this can be used for anything, but just for an example, we're going to be doing uh, this. So actually, we're going to do integer dot compare p1 dot age p2 dot age and I actually wanted to make these static Ooh. and we'll just do public static integer compare gender person p1 person p2 
we'll just say return p one dot gender equals 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 p two dot gender will return zero else if p one dot gender equals equals gender dot male we're going to return 1, else we're going to return negative 1. So basically what compare methods do in general is that they will turn uh, 0 if like if we do the, if we just hover over this we'll get the documentation compares two integer values, values return identical to what would be returned by integer value of compare. That's not, that isn't very explanatory. Now is it? Um, so the value 0, if they equal each other, a value, a negative value if the first argument is less than the second argument and a uh, value greater than zero if the first argument is greater than so we're gonna say okay if the if they're the same gender return zero because it's equal and if the first one is male we'll return a greater number because not to be sexist or anything just to make this tutorial easier we're going to say uh, the male gender will be sorted first followed by the female gender so in the main, we're going to create an array list of persons, and we're going to call it people. We're just going to import array list real quick. And we're going to add some people. So we're going to say people .add new person, and this is why I had this convenience method, so I can just say one name and one go instead of having to you know split it up we can say uh, person dot gender dot male let's just copy this a few times except they're not all going to be me let's do other neat things uh, I don't know um, Just, you know, weird names. I don't know. We do, I don't know. Coming up with first names is so much easier than coming up with last names. Don't you think? <clears throat> Man, something. I don't know. Yeah, that's a that's a last name. Except this is not a male, and I guess I should have a higher concentration of females. Uh, see, this is the fun part. No, it isn't. Uh, Yep, those are all legitimate last names. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of things. So at the end of this, we're going to say for every person in people system dot out dot print line p. And real quick down here, we're gonna say just so we don't get some gibberish. Plus this dot gender dot two string. So if we printed them out right now, if we ran the program right now, it'll just print out everything else. So I should change the age. Uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, so now if we run it, you can see everything's, you know, nice and working. So, if we were to sort these before, well, with a couple new features, we can say people.sort, and it asks for a comparator. And a comparator, that's nothing new. 
but instead of making like an anonymous in our class like we might have done before, we can use a different form of lambda expression. And this type of thing would be uh, person colon colon compare name. Now I can explain this. Um, basically what it's looking for is a comparator. So a comparator is a functional interface and all it is looking for is a method that returns an integer and takes two arguments of something that is a super of person. What we're giving it is a method that returns an integer and it takes two arguments which are persons. So that means we're basically giving it a reference to a method and it's going to use that method in place of a comparator. So basically internally it's creating a new comparator and the one method that the interface implements is being replaced with this method here. So there's a lot of inferred types right there. That There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, but thanks to Java 8, all that stuff is pretty much handled. Um, we, uh, writing the code is a lot shorter. So if you run this right now, it'll, short, it'll sort everything by first name. So alphabetical order, blah, 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 blah. There you go. Now suddenly, this gets more complicated if you want to do several other things. So let's say we want... Um, we wanted to sort it into a list of people whose name, whose last names start with W, and who are older than 20. So that would require a lot more work. We'd have to say um, if we want to do it the long way, we'll say uh, create a new array list for this. Um, no array list. Say for person P and people. If persons dot. I mean, if P dot last name dot starts with W. I'll say persons persons dot add p then we'll say for person p and persons if p dot age is less than twenty we can say uh, persons dot remove P. And let's say we wanted a list of um, only the ages at that point. So then we would have a new array list. Or let's just say a list of only their first names. Oh, I didn't need to put that there. Inferred types and everything. And we'll say for for person P and persons uh, first names dot add P dot first name. And then we can just say system dot out dot print line for every we'll just go to this for every string in first names system dot out dot print line the string so after that long complicated process we can print them out and it'll give us all the first names of all the what happened <laughs> uh... probably something bad Oh yeah, because we're editing the list while we're putting it through there. So in this case, another problem with that is that we'd have to create another array list. Persons 2. Persons 2 dot add. So now if we ran it, with the first name of every person who's... 
terminated forest system without a print line. What? Should have. Oh, wait. So right now it's looking for um, everyone whose last name starts with a W, so that'd be that person, that person. Oh, so none of them are older. So let's just say if. Let's just look for all the women. P dot gender equals equals person dot gender dot female. We're looking for all the women who is at least 20 years old and it'll print off their first names and it's only Becky. If we change this to 10 years old we'll get all the first name of all the women there. Emily, Sarah, Becky. Now there's a much easier way to do this now that we have streams. In fact we can do all of this in one line and not have to create well we just have to, would create, have to create like an array list for this or something like that. But what we can do, we can say people dot stream. So we're gonna get this new stream. Now the first thing we want to do, we can get all the uh, people who are female. There are several things you can do with streams, and all of them require these fancy new um, uh, functions. Not a part of the new function API added by Java 8. But if we wanted to filter them out and only get people that are f female, we would do a filter. This requires a predicate. A predicate um, is just something that um, takes a person, since it's an array, it's a stream of people. It takes a person in, and it will return a boolean. So right here, um, to create a predicate, all we have to do is you know put in a uh, a uh, lambda expression for what it is. So that means it has to take a person as an input and it has to return a boolean. I'm just gonna say return p dot gender equals equals person dot gender dot female. And to make this look cooler we'll just put this in parentheses. What? Oh yeah. What do you want this time? Predicate. Uh, pretty sure that's what a predicate is. Maybe. Gosh, what do you want? Filter predicate. Function dot predicate. And let's go look at predicates. Yeah, it returns a boolean after accepting a uh, type T. So this should be absolutely right because except it's accepting a person because it's yeah it's accepting a person as an input and it's returning maybe we want to make these brackets after all okay brackets it is so right now now it's uh, that returned a different stream so every time you apply one of these things to a stream it's going to return a new stream so you can keep doing things on it a stream is something you can only sort through once and so there are stream ending methods that you can do so that's filtered it so it has only females so next we can do is uh, filter it again so it only um, it only um, has uh, uh, people who be <laughs> people who be um, uh, older older than uh, 10 so we'll say filter, we're going to say input of person p. In fact, all we have to do is say p because it knows, um, because lambda expression have inferred types, you don't even have to specify person because it knows that the only input it's going to have is person. So we're just going to return p dot age greater than or equal to 10. So we filtered it again. So now what we want to do is turn it into a stream of of strings of just the first name. Again, there's another method on streams that we can use, and that's map. And this instead requires a function. And a function is, again, part of the new function API. It takes a input to the function of type the first, 
and then it outputs the second type. So it's going to input person, which because it's a stream of person of people, I mean to say. So it's going to input person, and it's going to output whatever we want else. So we're going to return p dot first name. So what that's going to do is create a stream of string because it knows that. And just to make this, you know, easier to see. So we're mapping, and then what we're going to do to this final stream is that we're going to say to array. There is another um, thing you could do. But this is going to return an object array. So what we're going to do is do dot to array, and it has an integer function, which should just uh, generate an array. So we should just be able to say blip 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 return new integer array. No, it's just going to be a string array. Uh huh. So the integer function. We're going to look up the integer function again because that's the fun part. There's a lot of fun parts. it's going to, all it does is apply, it takes an integer value and it's going to return type R, and the type R we want it to return is just an array. So we're going to say instead of this blank argument, it's going to be we just pass L. And what I expect it to be passing to there would be the length and the provided length, so we're just going to say new string array of length L. So now, we can say string array names equals that. So we're going to say names. So, wow, wasn't that a complicated process? Uh, which, it most certainly is a very complicated process, especially if you're not used to Java 8 by now. But if we, printed the, if we just printed this out real quick, we get the same exact thing we had last time. But instead of all this this long process of creating several different things what this offers to us is being able to code things a lot more concisely and letting the virtual machine do most of the work for us because this is doing a lot of the stuff that this does except we have to type less but it also is also a good lesson of how to do everything else with the streams because um, streams again is one of the big things that Java 8 added it allows you to go over things quickly and conveniently. So step by step, we're going to take this collections, and with any collection, you can turn it into a stream. And again, streams are just objects, and they contain this data, and you can only go over that stream of data once. So what this filter does, it goes over the stream once, and it says over every single index, it applies this predicate to it. And a predicate, again, part of the function API, the function API adds a, is, is just a very large library of functional interfaces. And when we went over Lambda expression, a functional interface again is just an interface where you only need to implement one method. So the one, so all the predicate does, it accepts an input and returns a boolean. Now, so that means this is going to accept an input of person P and return a boolean. And this is the boolean that we're gonna run over every single index in this first stream and we're gonna say and if the boolean is true it's going to filter it into the new stream that it's going to return and if it's false it's gonna filter it out so we're gonna say hey we only want I'm gonna say okay now that you're at um, this person in the stream if the person matches this conditional put it in the new stream so then it goes to the stream once and does it and returns a new stream with all the females. So with the new stream, again, we're going to filter and say, okay, for this person, for everything in the stream, you're going to check it against this conditional. So if that person is above or equal to the age of 10, put it in the new stream. Then we're going to say, okay, map. 
because what filter does, it returns a stream of the same type. But what map does, it allows you to convert the stream of this certain type to a new type. So we're going to say, okay, for every single type, the person P in the uh, stream, we're going to make, we're just going to put that in the new stream in the form of just its first name. So at this point, we have a stream of strings containing the first name of every female that's age is greater than or equal to 10. Then we're just going to say to array, which is we're going to convert it to an array. And this, again, just set, accepts it's asking for an integer function. And an integer function just it takes an integer as an input and returns anything. But what this is specifically asking for is an integer function that returns an array. So we're returning specifically a string array, since that's what we want to return. So we accept the length at once, and we're putting it into a new array of the length that it wants. So that's our output of this whole monstrosity. So if you're looking at this, you'll be like, well, I know this. This is simpler, but this requires a lot less resources, because creating streams is a lot less intensive than creating entire array lists, since streams have the added conditional of, hey, you can only go over this once. As soon as you go over this array, as soon as you go over it, we're just going to delete it. But while all these array lists are still going to be in memory by the end of the program. So it's a lot quicker. There are, so to array, while these are just um, stream altering functions, to array is one of the stream ending functions. So after you do this, you can not do anything else with the stream. The other ones, stream ending ones, there's two, both two arrays. There's collect, I believe. Yeah, the collect functions. Yeah, the collect uh, and the collect functions, I think, are the main ones. There are a few others that don't have to do with streams that much, more about objects. But it's mainly um, collect will return an array list, a bit more complicated, but the two array will return an array instead, which you can uh, turn into an array list, too. But, yeah. So what we could also do a stream is that after we do this, we could do a sort. We can get a sorted stream. And we can do the same exact thing we did earlier. And we can say, okay, I want you to sort these. We're going to sort these by first name. So now if we run this again, we can say now the list is going to be sorted. So it's going to be Becky, Emily, Sarah, sorted by first name. So it's really easy to, you know, add something else in there. But in order to get the, to fully grasp, you really need to understand the lambda expressions. You know, this type of lambda expression, this type of lambda expression, this type of lambda expression. There are several different ways in order to do that. So Java 8 added a lot of stuff, uh, needless to say and they all pretty much rely on lambda expressions which is pretty good once you get to know them but that being my, my short uh, subjective input of the night I'll say this is the end of this episode I hope I hope you know how to use streams now uh, what you can do is again just go to like the Java docs online about the uh, stream API I mean just doing you know dot you can run through all the different things you can do with the stream API. It's really useful. Um, what's really useful because instead of calling just stream, you can also call parallel stream, which means it'll do all this stuff, except it'll do it on it'll um, it'll access multi-core processors, so it can do it a lot faster. But again, there are a few um, hiccups that you might have to deal with along the way. Like it could be more difficult to, in my experience, with parallel streams. They run a lot faster, but um, getting them to uh, sort, sorting them properly, can um, you can get into just a bit of trouble. Like uh, filtering and mapping is, and everything else is really easy, but sorting because at the end of you know divvying up all of it to different processors, putting it back together, that sorting it is a bit difficult. So this has been episode three on the Java Eight, um, going over streams. Hope you learned something. I I learned something, yeah. So I hope you learned something too, and good night.